Uh, hi. Uh, today we are going to discuss about cellular adaptations in injury. First of all, I'll just give you a brief introduction about what are the topics being covered in the next few videos. In uh, today's uh, lecture, we'll talk about cellular adaptations, particularly atrophy. We'll talk about types of adaptations. We'll discuss various mechanisms involved uh, in these adaptations with some examples. Now, first of all, we all know that every cell within us is in the state of homeostasis. When I say homeostasis, it means that it's a state of equilibrium which is maintained by a self-regulating process. When such cell is exposed to any form of stress, then the cell tries to you know, uh, uh, become better uh, suited to the particular environment and that is called adaptation. For some reasons, if there is inability to adapt, then it progresses to what is called as cell injury. Okay, If the injurious agent is very mild and transient, then the injury is referred to as a reversible injury, where if the injurious agent is withdrawn, it returns back to its normalcy. If the injurious agent is severe and progressive, then it is referred to as irreversible injury. Okay, And there are two forms of irreversible injury. One is necrosis and two is apoptosis. These two forms are forms of cell death. So, in this particular chapter, we'll be discussing about all these things. We'll talk about adaptation, we'll talk about uh, reversible and irreversible cell injury with mechanisms. We'll discuss in detail about necrosis and apoptosis. Okay. What are uh, cellular adaptations? As I told you, it's uh, the adaptation is a new, steady, altered state. Okay, where uh, it allows them to survive, it continues to function, but in an abnormal environment. There are different types of adaptation. One is called atrophy, two is hypertrophy, three hyperplasia, and four metaplasia. So we shall discuss one by one in detail. Now, what is atrophy? Atrophy, uh, by definition, is it's a decrease in size or number of cells in an organ. Sometimes it can be both. It could be a decrease in size and number of cells of an organ. The basic mechanism for atrophy is uh, decreased protein synthesis and increased protein degradation. So, in other words, protein synthesis and degradation are coordinated processes which are regulated by signaling pathways. If there is any imbalance between these two, then the cell might go in for atrophy. Now, what are the different types of atrophy? One, uh, physiologic atrophy and two is pathologic atrophy. When I say physiologic atrophy, uh, this particular type of atrophy is something which is common during early development. You know? Sometimes, you know, during um, embryogenesis, the structures such as notochord and thyroglossal duct, you know, they can undergo atrophy in fetal life. The most important example which we give for uh, physiologic atrophy is decrease in the size of the uterus after parturition or uh, of uh, childbirth. This is also called as involution. Okay, that's uh, a an very classical example of uh, physiological atrophy. Second important uh, physiological atrophy is atrophy of uh, brain with aging. Let us discuss this uh, with illustrations. Coming to pathologic atrophy. Pathologic atrophy, you know, it, it depends upon the underlying cause. It can be localized or it can be generalized. Some of the most important common or uh, common causes of pathologic atrophy are one is uh, disuse atrophy. When I say disuse atrophy, uh, it means to say that uh, the muscles uh, in that particular limb are uh, not active. Uh, you know, when, when such muscles which are not active are left like that, it slowly becomes weak and then finally it can shrink in uh, size. This can occur when the when that particular limb is immobilized in a plaster cast or uh, when the patient is restricted to a complete bed rest. So, in these cases, you can expect disuse atrophy. Second important one is the nutrition atrophy. When I say nutrition atrophy, it means to say that we are talking about protein energy malnutrition. Okay, so marasmus, protein energy malnutrition or starvation atrophy. You know, it is associated with various skeletal muscle uh, uh, wasting. That's also called as cachexia. So that's another form of pathologic atrophy. The third one is ischemic atrophy. We all know that ischemia is uh, a decrease in the blood supply. Okay, that's because of some amount of occlusion. And whenever there is a decrease in blood supply, you know, that can result in progressive uh, loss of blood supply to that particular tissue and then progressive cell loss. 
for example you know uh, during uh, in case of atherosclerosis the vessels are narrowed and that narrowed blood vessel might not give adequate blood supply to the brain and then brain can undergo progressive atrophy okay in uh, aging sometimes now the fourth one is the neurologic atrophy when i say neurologic atrophy it means to say that there is some amount of uh, neuropathy or uh, there is some amount of neurological damage for example in the case of paralysis in the case of poliomyelitis where the muscle is wasted okay so that uh, uh, there is inactivity there is immobilization or there is restriction of movement because of neurological disorders and that can result in atrophy okay the fifth one is uh, the loss of endocrine stimulation so many endocrine glands like breasts and the reproductive organs they are dependent on endocrine stimulation for uh, the normal metabolism and for its function whenever uh, there is loss of such endocrine stimulation these organs will undergo atrophy and that's called uh, loss of endocrine uh, stimulation resulting in pathological atrophy the sixth one is the pressure atrophy when i say pressure atrophy you know uh, uh, when there is a compression of a tissue for some amount of time that can cause atrophy for example any tumor any enlarging tumor can compress the surrounding structures resulting in atrophy okay the atrophy is basically uh, because of ischemic changes uh, that results due to compression and that leading to the compression of the blood supply to that particular organ that's pressure atrophy these are uh, some of the examples of atrophy so this is the normal uh, this is a normal size uterus and that's a uterus which is enlarged in pregnancy so this is an involuted uterus which returns back to, returns back to its normal uh, size okay so that is physiologic atrophy and second one atrophy of brain in uh, 82 year old man that's because of atherosclerotic disease so look at the normal looking brain here on the right left hand side whereas the atrophy of uh, brain which you can easily identify by looking at the sulci and gyri the sulci which are nothing but the grooves or uh, you call them as furrows these are widened whereas the gyri are narrow that's how you uh, identify atrophy Uh, this is an uh, atrophy of uh, kidney probably be, probably because of you know uh, renal artery stenosis so you can easily see that uh, the size of the kidney is decreased compared to that of the other side thanks for watching uh, don't forget to log into uh, my website ilopathology.com where you can access you know uh, the uh, powerpoint presentations of various topics If you like this video please don't forget to hit the like button do comment and then don't forget to subscribe for more videos to come and please do share thank you